says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This morning I am called to worship. I call on the second last Sunday of communion in the afternoon place. And there have been a little concerning, but I don't think that Sunday as we left, we realized it would be the end of October before we gathered again in this space. So welcome back. It's uh, lovely to be here together. And if you've joined on the screen via Zoom, we're, we're glad that you're present with us also. We come to worship the God who is one. And we seek to love our God with our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength. We come before the God of all time and all space to worship with our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength. In Jesus, that God was revealed to us, the one who loved us as neighbours and friends, and it is Jesus the Christ that we seek to follow with our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength. And so let's offer our worship to our God with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we ask that on this day of all days, as we return to worship in this space, that you might stand in the center of all that we do. Be with us as we worship. Be with us as we question. Speak to us through the presence of your Holy Spirit among us in breaths of kindness and understanding. Be with us in a way that makes more clear to us the life of your calling. We thank you, loving God, that ordinary human beings can be close to your kingdom. We thank you that ordinary human beings like us with our small understanding of you and your will for us can carry us near enough to you for us to be your people. And so we thank you, holy God, that you chose to be near to us. We thank you for being present in our worship. And we seek your Holy Spirit to guide and direct. In Jesus' name we pray. So we are indeed back in this space. It's not quite pre-COVID conditions, of course. We are uh, still mandated to be wearing our masks. We will unfortunately have no congregational singing at this stage. And, uh, it's a little while yet before we're back having morning tea. But uh, as Arnold Palmer famously said about golf, all forward movement is progress. So uh, it uh, may not be quite what we're wanting, but we are back and it's wonderful to be here. And our hymn kind of imagines the world when we can sing again. Our hymn of praise is the hymn number 210 from Together in Song, for which uh, Guy up there on the uh, mezzanine level will be singing for us. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, my great He speaks 
and listening to his voice. New life the dead receive, new life the dead receive. The mournful, broken heart rejoice. The humble poor believe, the humble Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, assist me to proclaim, to spread through Last week, without a congregation present, we conducted worship here in this space for the first time since the end of June. And for me, it was a great pleasure to uh, hear Guy's voice. And uh, I assume you all had that same feeling listening to the organ accompanied by human voice. It's uh, one of the pleasures of life, is it not, to, uh, for the worshipping Christian. Having, God, uh, having reflected on our God and sought to bring praise with that hymn, we pause now with a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, as we bring our confessions in faith, we bear witness to our trust in you. We know that you will never turn us away. You will never leave us alone. We confess that we do not always love you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. Sometimes we close down our minds, our questions threaten our faith, and we fear that you will go from us in anger or in disappointment. Holy God, forgive our foolish lack of faith. Bring us to a sense of who you are and who we are that is rich and deep and full. Sometimes, holy God, we divert our energies into minor efforts, into things which take our time but which matter little in the end. We do this rather than find the strength which we need for courage and commitment to be part of real change in your name to efforts of significance and power. Forgive us, we pray. Give us a sense in which our lives are meant to be rich and full and meaningful. And then, holy gods, there are times when we do try to love our neighbours. And sometimes that's not so easy. It's hard to love people who are unattractive to us. People who show no gratitude for our love. Well, sometimes we run out of love for others because we've not stopped to care for ourselves. Holy God, forgive us. You have a better way. And we seek to find that way as we worship today. Return us to a deeper faith. Amen. And we know from the scriptures that our God loves us, body, mind, heart, and soul. God has so loved us that Jesus came to show us amazing dimensions of that love. Through him, we can know with certainty that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Again, a restrained uh, back at worship. COVID reality. We can't get up and greet each other in the way that we wish, but if you could, uh, and by uh, 
eye contact and by uh, gesture, you're very welcome. And please pass the peace with uh, those in the community. One day, one day. I don't know about you, but in reading about the 1919 to 2021 pandemic, my assumption was we live in a modern world. We've got modern medicines. It won't be two years of pandemic for us. So I thought last year it has dragged on, but we will one day get back to a world where we can uh, greet each other in the ways in which we're comfortable. But today's first Sunday back in real life. We have two powerful and magnificent scriptures. A psalm that Cheryl will read in a moment and a gospel reading of an extraordinary encounter between Jesus and the Pharisee who was honestly seeking truth, not seeking to trip up Jesus. Reading the psalm for today, I'm taken back to a day in June 1989. Chinese authorities had just massacred a whole lot of students in the Tiananmen Square where in this belief that somehow change was going to come to that country. And the students were out expressing their hope and dream for a better life and a better world. But the authorities had a different view and the tanks rolled into the square. There was that one moment of defiance with the young man holding the bags, standing in front of a tank. But it was an entirely grim moment. And on the Wednesday of that week, the local ministers association gathered and as was our habit, one of us was given the responsibility of a devotion. It was a devotion that uh, has stuck in my mind to this day. Reverend Fred Vanderbaum, a very careful, thoughtful Dutch Reformed Church minister, opened up the scriptures and he read to us from Psalm 146. And these words stuck in my head now and came to me this week as well for slightly different reasons. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On their, that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Now, in a much smaller scale and that uh, large scale Chinese authorities matter. This week has been a tough week for me. It may have been for you also, but probably not quite uh, as much as for me, because as you, you may know, ever since I met her, I've been a huge Gladys fan. I loved Gladys. I met her when she first won the seat of Willoughby. And I had this great belief that she was uh, someone special. This week, we've heard recordings of her conversations with her secret partner. And uh, for me, those recordings have uh, been heartbreaking to listen to. Someone that uh, has made a brand out of probity and out of doing the right thing. Spoke in those recordings of her colleagues as minions who just did what she said. Spoke in those recordings of sacking a bureaucrat who was going to do the wrong thing. and. It was such tough listening. It seems to me that uh, the words of the psalmist are so profound, are they not? Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. In the gospel reading for today, Jesus has asked a question about what is it that's the most important of the, of the laws and his answer is, was profound then and is profound now. Being back in real life worshiping, it's good to start with uh, a really big theme for what it is to be a person of faith.
Before we hear from those scriptures, though, let's listen and participate again in a hymn, this time the hymn number 436. We're continuing, given that today is Reformation Day, with uh, a famous Martin Luther hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Second reading is taken from Mark chapter 12. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength 
and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. <coughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Let's just pause again for a moment's prayer. Let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for your word, a light for our path, a lamp for our feet. We pray your blessing as we seek to interpret your word, and we pray in Jesus' name. Mark's telling of that extraordinary moment. The question is asked, what is the greatest commandment? There's a different focus to the other synoptic writers. In Luke, in some ways that little story is just a precursor to what follows, where the uh, questioner says, who is my neighbor? And Jesus' answer is the most uh, remembered. But here in Mark, that encounter is all about two people of good faith, two very different people seeking to, uh, to learn more about the life that they were seeking to live. On the one hand, a scribe whose life was given over to reflecting on the 613 laws of the Old Testament and making them a part of his life. On the other hand, Jesus, who was out and about teaching and preaching and showing that that way was not going to be a, a good way into the future. Scripture says that that Pharisee asked the question, what is the greatest commandment? And uh, Jesus' response is extraordinary, isn't it? He links two of those 613 laws. And in linking them, he gets to the, the very heart of, of what it is that he thought life was to be about. It's an unusual encounter because mostly in the Synoptic Gospels, when someone comes to Jesus, particularly a scribe or a Pharisee, they come with a question that's seeking to trip Jesus up. But this uh, encounter is entirely different. He answers the scribe's question with the very essence of his message. He answers the man's question by presenting him and us with his radical and life-giving message summed up in a nutshell. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And we've all heard countless sermons on that subject, have we not? But in Mark's telling of the story, there's a couple of intri intriguing little side notes and uh, in opening up the question of what that story might mean, it's good to reflect briefly on them. The first is, in fact, the last moment in the, in the story, and therefore in some ways the most significant. After Jesus had offered that answer, no one dared to ask another question. Now, at first glance, you could be excused for thinking that they were afraid of Jesus. That doesn't fit very easily with the, what we know of Jesus. It doesn't fit very easily with the fact that he's engaged in a, a friendly conversation with a, with a seeker of truth. And, of course, that, that probably wasn't, it seems, that wasn't the reason. The actual reason that no one dared to ask any questions was that their breath had been taken away by the power and the simplicity of the answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. For the scribe who'd come to him, his whole life had been given over to study of the scriptures and to uh, very serious engagement with the question of what it was that God wanted for human people. But Jesus, in just a few words, 
sums up all of his life's endeavor. In just a few words, offers for us a path to life and meaning and purpose. It was an amazing and a dumbfounding moment. For here was an obscure teacher from the back blocks, a carpenter from Nazareth, indeed. Here, this obscure teacher had come up with a blueprint for living that could transform the world's religious thinking. And in that small incident, I think, is a parable of what happens when people's lives encounter Jesus and struggling with what Jesus' life means. We are enabled to find life and truth and hope. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. I've puzzled a little over those questions this week as I sought to uh, have something to offer from the scripture for today. Of all days, the day when we're back in church after a long break. Jesus had been discussing with a friendly scribe the very essence of his meaning. What a powerful message to offer. Jesus, intriguingly, also in this encounter, says to this man, you are very near to the kingdom, which given his encounters with other Pharisees seems quite different, does it not? Usually when the Pharisees come to him with a question, he calls them snakes or vipers. But this man, an honest, seek, honest seeker after the truth, is given the respect that uh, he so clearly deserves. The answer is, of course, that life hinges on two things, loving God and loving neighbor. We all have to answer the question at some point in our lives, don't we, about what it is that Jesus' life means for us. We all have to answer the question about what it is that will make our lives rich and meaningful and good. Many of us, period of lockdown has been a, a, moment, a time for some introspection, has it not? We've had time to think and to react. And we're hearing stories of people who've found this uh, period of lockdown a time when they've turned their lives upside down. They've thrown in jobs that uh, they're not happy with. They've, sold their houses in the city and moved to uh, the country where they can live uh, differently and better and more richly. Love and, loving God and loving our neighbour. That's the key, of course, to a life lived well. What is our life? Is the question we ask. Do these things and you shall find life. You shall begin to really live. That's essentially what he says to this Pharisee. And essentially what he says to us. Of those 613 commandments in the Old Testament, which one is the most important? To love your, the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. And the second is like it. To love your neighbor is yourself. These two commandments hinge all the law and the prophets. Do these and you shall live. That's the story that we hear as we begin again the business of making a rich and meaningful life in this complicated postmodern world. Let's just pause for prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for that moment. When your son Jesus encountered a Pharisee who was keen to find truth. We know that you encounter each one of us as we seek to find the key to a life that's rich and full and meaningful. And we pray your blessing as we seek to do that, that we might uh, reflect on your scripture, respect, reflect on the person of your son Jesus and find for ourselves 
life that can make sense of all the complexity. We pray your blessing as we seek to do this and we pray in Jesus' name. Our hymn is the hymn number 596. Fill my whole life, O Lord my God. Welcome everyone this morning. It's lovely to see everybody here. And welcome to those who are on Zoom too. Um, I hope you feel part of everything that's happening here. Notices. Uh, firstly, the offering plate is back down the end down there near the door if you feel like putting something in it. But we do encourage you to, um, to still do online banking. That would be great. The Advent study starts on Thursday, November the 11th at 7.30, either here or on Zoom. And it, the title is Signs of the Times, Christ and Climate. You will have received a flyer in your notices. Um, please come. Please think about coming because it will be well worth it. And Christmas is coming, believe it or not. Uh, on the 4th of December, we are going to have our Christmas party. That'll be a good celebration. Just to uh, It'll be our first celebration so um, for the year almost. So uh, please think about coming to that. And Barbara has a sign-up sheet. Um, Barbara, will we put it on the communion table, perhaps? And if you, because there's a bit of space around here, so if you want to sign up for that, please do. Uh, otherwise, email Barbara and let her know. Thank you. I think that's all I have to say today. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, the life and witness um, process is still continuing. I haven't heard anything in addition to what I said last week. So I will keep you all um, up to date with uh, things as we hear. I think what they're doing now is to look up all the documents that we provided, all the meetings that they've had with us. Um, and uh, we should hear shortly about the next round of meetings with Peter, Lynn, Michael, uh, Lorna, Kim, and Gaitlin, I think, and th that'll be the next round of uh, meetings, and then we'll go from there. So um, keep reading the news sheet. We'll, I'll, I'll provide as much in there. There's a link there for you to look at the documents that we've provided. Um, and um, if you have any questions, ask Joanne, Michael, or myself. Um, and we'll give you uh, the latest as we know it. Thanks.
The, the prayers this morning are a little bit different, and so you will see that there's the white, the white um, writing up there is the end of what I'm going to say, and then there are lo some longer responses that I'd like you to join in, please. So you'll just have to keep your eye on the screen. The United Nations Climate Change Conference will be held in Glasgow from October 31 to November 12. In the weeks beforehand, people across the world have continued to advocate for stronger action to limit global warming and for just solutions to the climate crisis. Our prayers today were prepared by the Youth Climate Action Task Group, members of the Uniting Church. So let us pray. God, our creator, you made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them is your own. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. We pray for those who are most impacted by changing climate. We remember First Nations peoples who particularly suffer from resource extraction and climate change. We hold before you the people of the Pacific whose identities are threatened and livelihoods destroyed. We remember victims of droughts and floods, fires and storms, and temperature extremes across the world. God of love, heal the brokenhearted and bring hope for a sustainable future. Remind them that you are near and comfort them with your presence. Give them strength to rebuild and restore what has been broken and bless those who provide aid to their rescue. We pray for all participants at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. Governments, negotiators, civil society organisations, businesses, scientists, communities, as they work together to strengthen countries' commitments to limit global warming and to adapt to the impacts of a changing climate. God of justice, renew those who disnoped and desperate from long years of advocacy. Move those who have blocked action to limit the temperature rise to a different imagination. Grow in those alienated from Earth a vocation to care for her and her creatures. Inspire in all compassion and solidarity across cultures and generations. As we strive to care for each other and the earth, God of hope, at times the breadth of climate justice seems just too great. Remind us that you are greater, that you are on the side of the marginalised. At times the nature of climate justice just seems too complex. Remind us that your love encompasses all creation, that there is nothing outside love's scope. At times, the path of climate justice seems too long. Remind us that you walk with all who call for climate justice, including us. Sustain us, bolster our courage, give us wisdom. In our small and large actions, Remind us you are with us. All the time we need to grow together in love that all in your good creation may yet flourish. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Lord, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is now and forever. Amen.
In a moment, I'll be offering a blessing. Once uh, that blessing is offered, we will uh, have the opportunity to listen to Peter's postlude for our service. And then the invitation is, if you uh, have the, the time to stay, uh, to stay where you are, as I said, no morning tea this morning. And hopefully we can just have a little bit of a conversation with those here in this uh, worship space and uh, those who are uh, joining via Zoom. Just about how the, the post-lockdown world is treating you. If tomorrow's 1st of November, travel to the regions is a big change for you. I'd like to hear a story about that and the like kind of thing. And so let's now pause, pray and reflect. Gracious God, we thank you that you've journeyed with us through this lockdown. And we give you thanks and praise that you guide and direct us in this next phase of our living. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. <laughs>